Well, to answer your question, what Please. advice would I give myself if, if I could go back in time and grab myself by the scruff of the neck when I was 20? Yeah. I would say to myself, go against yourself. So whenever you're making decisions, you think about other people first, basically. And going against yourself can mean being present because the thing that I want to do is, you know, ponder the Roman Empire or like get on my phone or whatever when somebody's talking to me. But the, the thing that I, to, to go against myself is to listen, focus, you know, and be present in the conversation and be present in the, the whatever it is. Like conscious breath to be present. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that is, you know, making the decisions that I, that I make, I have to th take other people into consideration and it's not just all about what I want to do. That's what I would tell myself. And I think that that would, that would help me get t to where I wanted to be a lot faster and I got to own it. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say, well, society said this or whatever. It's, you know, I'm not an idiot, you know, we're intelligent people and to live a life like just always trying to like find the, the thing, just to only do the things that I want to do. It's like playtime, right? All the time. And it's, yeah. it's hard to resist that because when you become an adjuster and at 29 years old, make $115,000, which by the way, in today's dollars is $250,000. <sighs> Yeah, I did. I you did the math on that, I'm sure. Well, yeah, a couple <laughs> weeks ago, and I was like, "What?" Uh, so that's a lot of money for punk kid. No, hundred percent. It is life changing money. I mean, I, one of the years that I was adjusting, I was able to pay my parents' mortgage, not off, but I was able to pay it. Yeah, that felt so rewarding. I was 25, 24. Mm. I mean, who does that at my age? Yeah. You know, even if it's just a month, I wasn't living with them either. So it just it made it that much more sweeter. It was yeah. a Christmas gift too. So oh, yeah. I took my I took my mom to Europe. <sighs> um, I took my dad on a couple of like. Up in Wisconsin, um, there's a on Lake Superior, which Wisconsin and like where Minnesota kind of come together. There's like a peninsula there, and there's a little group of islands called the Apostle Islands, and you can charter boats, right? Sailboats. It's, yeah. it's a big sailing grounds. So I would charter like a 34 foot, you know, tartan or whatever, and it's a bare boat charter. So you bring your own food, and you you take the boat and you just go wander around the islands. Oh so man! So me and my dad are out there fishing and sailing around, and like you're basically camp car camping in a boat. Yeah. Basically, you know, lots and lots of fun. So I did stuff like that, but you know, most of it was buying a new pickup truck, buying a bunch of new guitars, buying guns. Oh, you play? You play too? I do. Oh, that's you play? Yes, I do play. Okay. I was uh, self-taught. There was a girl I was interested in at the time. Thank God it didn't work out because again, I met my MOE or my girlfriend and uh yeah I, now i just play right, well. guitar songs for her you know so it's that's cool it's, it's nice and sweet yeah um so yeah so i did stuff like that and travel a lot and there's other things i could have been doing that were more productive honestly sure and doing that stuff by yourself there's a certain level of fun and satisfaction because you're like yeah i can totally do this it's not going to break the bank at all if i go to you know to wherever to ireland for two weeks or whatever it is by yourself it's boring right it's a whole yeah, lot more fun I, you know i bought motorcycles and this is this is when things started to kind of like click for me and sort of like turn the corner a little bit is that i bought i had a, mo a motorcycle and i put a gazillion dollars into c customizing it and the yeah. whole nine yards yeah and i'd ride it around by myself you know i and I, had, I was living in a fifth wheel and had the, the rv or the motorcycle in the back of the fifth wheel Toy hauler. Living a life. And I was traveling storm to storm to storm. And I would park in these campgrounds and take the motorcycle out and ride it around for maybe once every two weeks when I was on a cat because that was the only time I had. And then and it was fun, you know. But then I went on a, a couple of rides with a bunch of guys. And we like went, rode two hours, got lunch, and rode two hours back. And it was like memories of a lifetime. Just having other people there and just like, you know, so I was, I, and this is way deeper than I personally like ever talk about like on this channel. Sure. But you could kind of look, and I don't know if I thought of myself this way, but I was kind of like, I just, I don't have a problem being by myself, but being around other people and 
helping other people achieve their goals and their you know dreams and all that kind of stuff is so much more rewarding than just doing things by myself. And it's something that I, I probably still struggle with these days. You know, I'm a human being. So that's the advice I would give myself is to go back in time and I probably would punch myself in the mouth <laughs> just to wake me up, just as a wake up call and be like, bro, Duh. you're going to just trust me on this one. Come here. Let's talk about it. Let's have a short conversation. Yeah. I think everybody that's, I think everybody that's my age and older would do the exact same thing. There are very few people yeah. they probably can look back and say, well, you know what? I did everything perfect. Yeah. You know, hindsight is 2020 and, and it is. Th- that frontal lobe just doesn't develop in, in time for you to make decisions that will affect the future. I no. mean, you're just living fast and young, you know? Yeah. Just enjoying being young and pretty and that's it. That's all you got. So your youth, right? I'm clenching onto it as much as I can, man. It goes faster and faster. It and faster. does, man. Yeah. You, you can't even, <laughs> it's a fleeting moment in time. That's it all it is. It is. And we're not here forever. No, know? man, we're not. So yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah. Good advice. Well, maybe somebody will take it. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope somebody out there. It sounds does. like you're already a few steps ahead of me. So what does it actually look like when adjusters with decades of experience between them scope a hail damaged house on video? What about how to actually do a claim in Xactimate? What is stability and how do you even get started in it? What if there was one place, one huge and expanding library of property claims, adjusting videos showing how it's done? What if there were also complete Xactimate certifications as well as the latest and most up-to-date Xactimate mobile training? You know, what if? What if the dream was a reality? Get started for free binging all the desk and field claims adjusting videos you can stand right now at adjustertvplus.com. Think of it as a virtual ride-along. Speaking of ride-alongs, click here to get right along to the next video because it's a, well, do you see how it's, it's a pun, you see? Ride along, get it right, just move right along versus ride along, it's right along, get right along to it.